Get everyone, B Asian Day here. We're going to have a look at this Dell UltraSharp U2421 HE monitor. It's a USB C hub monitor. Now, what that means is it's bit like having a docking station built into this monitor. So you actually plug your USB peripherals into this monitor as well as if you want to, uh, network cable as well. And then you plug the USB-C cable to your laptop or device and it will provide all those USB accessories as well as the network to your computer and charge your computer as well or device. So. We're going to actually have a look at the features of this monitor and I have done the unboxing as well as just cover the ports of this monitor. Now, if you haven't checked that video out, I'll put in a link in the description below so you can check that out. So I won't be covering that part of this in this video. So I'll cover all the different parts of this video. Now I'll also be putting timestamps along this video here so you can skip to the different sections to make it easier for you. Now, first off, the quick specs of this monitor. I'm just going to put that up on the screen for you so you can actually have that a read of that. Now one of the two key notes about this monitor is the maximum charging ability to the device or laptop from the USB-C is a maximum of 65 watts. Now for 65 watts it will cover most of your basic laptops that don't actually have a discrete graphics and it will also charge your MacBook Pros for up to 13 inch without a slow charge. But for anything above that, that requires more than 65 watts, it will put it on slow charge. Now I've got one here, which is a 15 inch Dell XPS that requires 130 watts. It will, it will still charge it, but it will be on slow charge. Same with the 15 inch MacBook Pros and the 16 inch MacBook Pros, it will be on slow charge. It will charge it, just slow charge, and it won't harm it. The other thing to make note of is the maximum brightness of this display is rated to 250 nits of brightness. Now I have tested this out, and this one particular one I've got here went up to 251 candler per square meter, which is 251 nits of brightness. So that was dead on the mark, which is great. And I'm also going to help the photographers and videographers that were looking for the 120 candler per square meter. I pretty much had to set the brightness to about 50% and the contrast on this monitor to are anywhere between 70 to 73%. Just to help you guys out if you're looking for the 120, if you don't actually have a colorometer like I do. The other thing to take note of, there is no built-in internal speakers, but if you plug into the USB-C or even the, the HMI or even the DisplayPort, and you will think it has some speakers into it, so you do need to make sure you need to check your speaker audio systems that it is not using the monitor so you can actually use the internal built-in speakers for your laptops or your device as well but if you do decide to actually use the monitor as some audio device you need to plug in external speakers into the audio plug into this monitor here just to let you know now it does have physical buttons on the bottom here, which is absolute fantastic. I love physical buttons because I'm not really second guessing. I'm always able to wake it up or even press things. Things so I love having physical buttons. One of the things I've noticed that have improved on this monitor, which I really do like, is how it swivels. Now with the previous generation of monitors, the swivel is actually done at the base. Now it used to be on the bottom of the base where it's actually rotating like a lazy Susan and pretty much this is now changed where the swivel is actually done near the top section of this stand which is great actually because now that we swivel this space never moves and i like that because if you're swiveling and you've had stuff along the base it would not and when you do the swivel it will knock those things over which is really bad i've actually had a cup of water or even also a cup of coffee that's what was sitting next to it and I want to swivel it it actually knocked it over which is really annoying but that's great that it's actually now done at the top level another thing to take note of it is visa compatible which is great so you actually can mount it onto big monitors stands or monitor arms just like this one is I'm doing here which is good so you don't have to worry about that one of the things I do like about the Dell monitors is how the power is provided now it uses just a normal standard sort of power socket here for power cables which is your free 
socket sort of system, which I really like. So you don't actually have a power brick or these special nice little connections that some of the other manufacturers have. This is a very standardized cable. I like that. And pretty much you won't have to worry about a power brick or if you lose that, you can pretty much buy these cables very quickly to replace because these cables sometimes do have become faulty and they're very easy to replace. Whereas the other power bricks, they can be quite costly. So I like having one of these here and you can quickly extend these to, as well too if you actually know how to extend these ones. But I like having one of these nice universal power cord so you don't have a power brick it's just all the power is built into it which is great besides its ability to swivel it also is able to tilt as well and i'll just quickly show you its maximum tilt angles on both sides here and it is able to also rotate as well so the rotation is only to 90 degrees on one side and then you have to return it back to the other side to actually tilt it along the other side as well now you also can change the ability to for the OSD for if it's in portrait mode you can actually change it so it looks in portrait mode just to make things easier as well too and that's done by the OSD which we'll get onto later now it does has uh, adjustable height stand as well so when it's at its maximum height from the top of the monitor to the base it measures at 48 centimeters and when this monitor is adjusted to its lowest point from the top of the monitor to the base it measures at 34.5 centimeters I did cover and also tested out how this monitor can work with conjunction with another monitor to run in dual extended screen mode for a Windows laptop and a Mac and that was done in my unboxing video so again I'll put a link in the description below so you can actually follow that video there. The bezel on this U2421HE is extremely narrow. I'll narrow along the top sides and the bottom which is very unusual you'll see even the Dell logo is actually very small because they have a very narrow bezel on the bottom so it's really good to have this in a multi monitor setup with the narrow bezel on the side which is absolute fantastic now the maximum resolution on this U2421HE is 1920 by 1080 and its maximum refresh rate is 60 hertz Testing out the color gamut coverage of the U2421HE, it measured in at 91% sRGB coverage and 63.2% Adobe RGB coverage and 65.1% DCI-P3 coverage. I did perform the color calibration on this monitor to see how it went for the factory calibration and I did find that this monitor here was a bit cool on my ambient light so when i actually saw it after the calibration it warmed up a little bit so i do advise you if you're working with colors or serious back colors to actually get your own colorometer or color calibration hardware and it does save your life with a lot especially with different ambient light so there are five buttons on the bottom here the very first one on the right hand side is the power button you'll see an led light that goes white as well when it's on and then you can pretty much go to the third button which is the middle button if you click on that one there you'll actually get the menu screen here click that one again and then we get the osd here so at the moment we've got the brightness and contrast straight up and that is at the moment set for 50 percent and 71 percent for this particular monitor here for my 120 km per square meter that's what i've already achieved for that one there so you can actually see that i'm just going to go back one here and then we'll just drop down a menu which is the input source and you can see there's a USB type C and there's display port and then there's HDMI and then I'll just go back down to the next one which is color now with color there's actually different presets here at the moment so let's just go into that presets and I'll just go standard now this it can be done in one of the quick menus where I'll show you a little later so at the moment, I normally just use standard but there is a comfort view and there is multi-screen match is you're matching other screens as well here yeah. and then there's movie of course it's pretty self-explanatory as well and there's gaming version and then you can have a custom temperature as well and i'll just use leave it in standard so i'm just going back that one there and then we've got color input format which you can then change from s from rgb to yrgb very rarely i'll actually change 
to a different one. So if you do change the other one, you'll know what you're doing for that for sure. And you can also reset the colors if you wanted to as well too. So I'm just going to go down to display. Now you can change the different aspect ratio. I just leave it for wide. And there's also sharpness. Now the response time is the one that I will want to bring your attention to. So I'll just navigate to that one there. Now at normal, it means it is at eight milliseconds. Now you can go down to fast, which will then bring it to five milliseconds. Now, because with fast, you do waste a little bit more power consumption. I'm just gonna leave it on normal here. So, and then MST, you can turn it on and off. Now that's basically means where you're actually spitting this out to another monitor. Now, Macs don't support MST, so it's not useful on Macs. So you can pretty much turn that off, but what you can leave it on as well, and it allows you to do dual screen to another monitor there that supports MST, or the Windows do support MST, and different Linux distributions will support it as well. Now let's go down to menu. And as you can see, the menu, you can change the language there. Now with the rotation wise, I'm just gonna go down to rotation. Now with rotation, let's just switch that around. So this is when you do rotation. So if you've got this in portrait mode, that was will be very handy. So you, you don't have to twist your arm for that there. So I'm just gonna switch that rotation back to different sides. And I'll just show sure you can go upside down as well if you really want to, if you have this monitor hanging the other way around. And that's more for the visa mount if you're gonna do that. Now transparency is the transparency for this menu. So it's more set to 20%, but you can also increase it and down. Now the timer is the timer for this OSD to stay alive. So I have to set to 20 span. If it doesn't do anything for 20 seconds, it will then turn it off uh, itself off the OSD. So I'll just go back to the monitor mode. Lock, you pretty much don't need to do that. Take care of that. So that's pretty much just lock. So I'll just go back to the personalize down here. Now with personalize, you can actually customize all these different settings here for different uh, quick menus here for the first two. And then of course you can just see what all the rest are. I'm just going to go back to the other one down here to others. Now with others, it's pretty much just giving you information on this particular monitor here. If you find this video informative or enjoy it, or even just support my channel, smack that like button for me. And if you haven't done already, subscribe my channel by hitting that subscribe button as well. And also the notification bell, because I do try to upload a new video every week. And just remember, imperfections in life makes it beautiful and interesting. I'll see you next video.